it's another day and I went out and I got some more of these connectors so I now have the full complement of connectors up there which is great I'm waiting on this bullet connector arriving so I can reconnect that I've worked out some of these wires so this one here with the red trace that one actually goes to the brake switch because ooh. so when you're under the car here this purple wire you can just see has a red trace on the inner wire so looking at the wiring diagram as well I know where that one goes what's then slightly confusing is one of these is for the wiper and one of these is for the horn and I don't know which is which yet so I'll have to do a, a continuity test and figure that one out luckily the wiring for the wipers just pops out there so I don't have a lot of distance to bridge. Once I know which one of those is which I can then get this all connected up. So much for checking continuity. The little battery there has died and it's a weird size that I don't have. I'm at a part of the job where it would have been easier if there was two of us. This is the dim dip switch, foot operated, so you push on that and that works. Now we know from when, the, when we first got the car that this does work and now that we've got it off you can see how bad the wiring actually is on here. The issue I'm having with a lot of these parts I'm dealing with today is the fixings are through bolts with no captive nut and this is in the middle of the car so I'm having to brace a spanner on the nut inside the car and then undo it from outside or the other way around depending what I've got and um, it's slowing me down a little bit but now I have this off I can get some wires connected up to do the wiring on this piece I'm going to disconnect these one at a time I know from the wiring diagram that it's this switch here and the wiring colours on here do match the wiring on here and this is the original wiring and that also matches the looms so that makes my life a lot easier. And the new harness actually comes with little open spade connectors so I don't need to worry about threading bare wires through as I have in other places. Smaller screwdriver. I should just be able to loosen that. Yep, there we are. And then I'll, well, I can't really show you because it's all the way back here, but what I'll do is put each new wire in as I take the old one out, then I shan't get them muddled. There's the new harness up there. I still haven't figured out exactly what the route is, so everything's very loose, it's not clamped in place. And the new wires come down to the switch, and that then fixes to the bulkhead through those two holes. The wire itself kind of squashes to one side, and then that pops in there like that. The only thing is, I can't refit this on my own because I can't get the nuts started on the bolts because I can't hold both sides at the same time. So I'll have to wait for Pat to come back to help me with that. It does mean this old wiring can now come out the car, which is great. I think, I think that's the last of the old stuff underneath here now. Now it should just be a case of connecting all of these bits and pieces and figuring out where everything goes taking the seats out to give myself some better access and I'm now working my way through on the dashboard wiring and I'm getting a little bit confused I can figure out most of it but there's one or two bits that just I don't know they're not making much sense to me the thing that I can ignore are all of these these are for the flashing indicators that we're going to have added to the car and they're labelled as such. One of the few items that is labelled on the loom. This one 
and the black wire I know is the um, power socket, the cigarette lighter. This one I can't identify. It's yellow with a black trace. It has an outside the car sheath on it, but it doesn't match up with anything on my diagram as far as I can figure out. And I don't know why it's got an eyelet on it. So I'm going to leave that one for now. I can't figure that out. On this section, that's the earth for the instrument panel. That one's the oil sender uh, light that goes in the top there. This one's the ignition light. These two are for the uh, fuel gauge. Then these two wires here are for the panel light switch, which is this little toggle here. But I don't know what this one is for for exactly, well, I know what it's for, it's for the panel lights here. What I don't know is what that connects to. I also don't know where the wire is that's supposed to go between these two yellow wires with the bullet connector. And this one I think goes to the ignition. This cluster here is all ignition. This black and white one, that should go to the ignition, and then another one the same should go to the clock. That wire's not present, so I'm guessing they don't provide that one? I think the problem I'm facing with this one is, one, I'm new at the job. Two, this harness doesn't actually have the whole harness. There's certain bits that are missing. I don't know why that would be. As far as I know, the equipment on this car is all standard. This is how they came. And it's not like there would have been blanking plugs like you get on something newer. So I'm a bit confused about some of the wiring still. The additions, funnily enough, they make the most sense to me. But this area, I'm having a bit of a headache with it. Because I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do and where things are supposed to go. So I'm carrying on in the way that I have been throughout, which is plug in the things I know and see what's left over. And that seems to be working. But it's still annoying that there's bits left over. We'll get there. It's just going to take me a while. Here we are, behind the dashboard. This is very, very difficult to film, so apologies for the slight rubbishiness. I think I've found a mistake on this new harness. I've got everything connected up here, apart from the clock, which is this one here in the middle, because I think there is a wire missing. This black and white one here is what should go to the clock and the ignition, but there's only one, and it's in the ignition bundle. So, like with the wire to the distributor from the coil, which is not supplied, and the stator tube wiring, I think it's just one they don't give you. At the top, these are the ignition and oil lights. Because I'm behind the dash, I can't remember which is which, but one's for one and one's for the other. The white wire is correct. That runs between the two of them. But the yellow wires don't seem to be. Now, these have bullet connectors on the end, and I couldn't figure out what they went to. On the diagram, the ignition is yellow, the oil is yellow with a brown trace. So these two should go to these lights up here. And I think these should probably be bullet connectors rather than eyelets. Because I don't know how you would connect them otherwise, there's no way of connecting them. I've got all the gauges back in now, which is fantastic. I think I understand how to sort the wiring out, but I hadn't really expected to have to make changes to a new harness that's supposed to be like for like. I'm not going to bother chasing this one up, it's just going to be easier to fix it. All that's left to connect on here now, with the exception of these lights at the top, is the ignition wiring down here. And to make it easier, I might unscrew this from the dashboard just so I can see what I'm doing. 
it's, it's very difficult to do any of this wiring with the car in one piece. But equally, I think I would have struggled to do it with the dashboard out anyway because of how you got to get everything in and out. In the engine bay, all of this is tidied away now. I just need to find a relevant clip to put it up there. Uh, once I've got a new battery for my multimeter, I can figure out which one of these two goes to which function and then put them in the relevant ports because I'm not sure which is which. This top one takes two wires and that one just takes one and one of these goes to each but they look the same. I don't know what I'm going to do about the horn wiring. There's clearly something I missed there as well. Um, I'm just not sure what that is. It might just be a case of connecting things properly. You know, it, it's sort of correct and sort of not, but that's that's nothing I can really change. I still don't know what this wire's for. It has a plastic sheath on, which would suggest it goes outside the car, but there's nothing for it to connect to. And it's not in the wiring diagram, so I'm a bit baffled on this one. I don't know where that should go. I'll figure it out. The only bit of old wiring that's still in here is some wire from the wiper motor switch. Realistically this should have been replaced, but it's a dashboard out job again, and I kind of don't want to do it. The wiper switch does work, so I don't know, we'll see about that one. And then of course I have to figure out what I'm doing about the flashes. Uh, I thought that these ran off the actual semaphore switch, so whenever you switch the semaphore your indicators would come, up, uh, come on as well. That's how it was described, and that doesn't seem to be how it works. I'm a bit confused on that one, so it just needs it needs some figuring out. I'm sure it's very obvious once I know what I'm doing, but right now I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these, so we shall see. I have a little bit of time spare before work, so I'm going to have a quick look at some of the bits and bobs I can do in the engine bay on the Lanchester. I can't wheel it out, I haven't enough time for that today but I can probably do that tomorrow if the weather holds. I shan't be doing anything inside the car. I'm just going to do what I can reach in the engine bay for now. There's some small jobs I can do. I have a new battery for the multimeter so I can sort this out. Uh, the new bullet connector for that red wire hasn't arrived yet. Neither has the tool. And the mystery wire, this this mystery wire here, it was suggested that it might be for the voltage regulator, but that's quite a long way away. And I can't really route this wire any differently, so I don't think it is for that. I have the multimeter set for continuity, so... We're listening for that, and the easiest one for me to check of the two is the wiper motor, which is this one. And I just need to join from there to here. Once I get the beep, I know which one's which, I hope. I'd say that one is for wiper. Nothing at all on the other one, so that must be horn. I believe I've got this wired up correctly now. So after the continuity test, we know which purples did which. So I knew which one now was the separate one. So that's for the horn. That one's for the wiper. I think that one's for the brake switch. Yeah, that one's for the brake switch. Down here, these white ones are for ignition. So I've put the power outlet into the same socket. If I've understood the diagram correctly, that means this should only be on when the ignition is on, which is what you want from the power socket. Didn't run it from the black and white, which feeds the clock, because that didn't seem to be the right one. 
I'll find out if I've got that right or wrong when it comes to testing. The other one I'm trying to figure out is this little lead here. It had been suggested that it might go up to the box here and be the earth for that. But it doesn't reach. The furthest you can get that is there. And that's still a long way off. And the reason for that is this feeds the... This is really tricky to film, but this spur here goes down to the starter and that spur there goes to the dynamo. That's one of your restrictions. This main spur, that goes down to that junction in the chassis, so I can't actually pull any of this any further up there. So this eyelet must either go to this bolt for the carburetor, which honestly, that one feels the natural choice that's where it wants to branch off to and where it wants to sit. Or it goes to that block there. I don't know what that block's for. It just seems to be there. Um, there isn't one on the other side. So if you look on this wing, there's, there's nothing on it. Which makes me wonder if that's either somewhere to connect a wire or maybe it's for the capillary tube here. Maybe that bolts onto that. I don't know. I don't have a reference for that. So I'll have to ask on the forums, see if anybody else can enlighten me. That's as much as I can really do under here, I think. A lot of these are the holes like those, that's for the heater pipes that obviously aren't in at the moment because the heat is out. I'll double check a few things and come back to it. I've had to take the ignition switch out of the dashboard. I cannot do it in situ. It's not the easiest thing to do. There's these four screws that go into the back of this panel and the switch pushes in from the back. You can't really wire it up without the dashboard being fitted. It's kind of awkward. I've put the flasher cans on here, so that tidies up those wires. I am going to have to change these out though. These, I believe, are the old bimetallic strip types. They're not going to work with the LED bulbs that we're having to use in a couple of places. More expense, but at least they've provided these. Also plugged in a generic cigarette lighter here. I've got um, a whole bunch of different sockets, so I've probably got one that's a a nicer design, probably something a bit more like this one, rather than this very modern looking one. Uh, I think I'm going to take the bulb off this, don't think it's needed, and there are, under here, just a couple of screw holes from something that used to be fitted, so I'm going to repurpose those with a little bracket, and then that will just live there, so if I can get a very similar sort of pull to the washer plunger, that would look good, it wouldn't look out of place then. A couple of changes on the wiring diagram, unsurprisingly. Uh, the letters that are on the diagram, it could be that I've not read them correctly when I retrace this. They were very difficult to read. It could be as well that it's a slightly different design. So I've just labelled this up and I will amend this. So I'm going to have to redraw some of this anyway to suit this car. So that's our first amendment. Not that First Amendment, that's a different thing. I have to disconnect these so I can put the proper holders on because I have no idea how these are supposed to work. It's going to be tricky to do, just fiddly, especially since my soldering iron's a bit rubbish. But it's what I've got, so it's what I have to use. I'm, I'm not very good at soldering and I don't have a very good soldering iron or a very good setup. But it's done. I've got these ones off. And we've got the original ones back on. Now I know it probably sounds a bit weird to put the original bulb holders in, but they do actually fit better. And these have the proper connectors on them for the wiring. The new wiring section here just, I couldn't connect things up because the holders were incorrect. This should fix that. When I fitted those new sockets, well, the old sockets rather, this wire is left over um, and isn't used. 
but it's the right length for doing the ignition to clock wire which isn't provided so all I've done is used a marker pen to put some black dots on for continuity it seems silly to buy a whole meter of wire when I only need that much this seems like a sensible solution well it doesn't light much from this side but the wiring is basically done now there are a couple of mysteries I still don't know what this is for I haven't found anything that's missing a wire and it's not on the diagram it doesn't match anything that's in the car that I can see it doesn't look like the wiring for the heater so I don't actually know what this one is I don't have any eyelets at the moment so I can't connect this one which is for the clock and that one connects up there we don't know if this clock works hope it does but very often they don't all of the wiring under here now is connected and as far as I can tell everything's where it should be it is not a fun job the only other thing left to connect under here are these wires these come in from the engine bay and this is for lighting and that connects to these three this one here which is from the same branch I think is for the wipers and the wiper switch wiring is here this one I think is what should connect to there this isn't an original wire and this one, I think, is an earth. Possibly the other way around. I don't know what colour convention the previous person working on this was using, if any. The only problem is, to get to the switch, I might have to take the dashboard back out, which... Uh, but if we have to, we have to. It's one of those jobs. And obviously I don't have the connectors for these two sections, they weren't provided, so I'll have to buy some more of those. Steering column here for location reference, we're underneath the dashboard. This wiring here is what comes in from the engine bay and joins up to the main harness inside the car. I've got two wires left, this one is for the wipers and this one joins up here to this connector here. You can see I've already threaded the rubber tube on there. Next job is to connect this piece. I'm going to have to put the camera down and do it and then bring you back because there's nowhere for me to rest the camera while I do this and it's a two hand job. By opening that connector up, I'm able to get these two bullet connectors in and then this piece, again, it's another two hand job so I'll do it off camera. This piece literally just slides on over and ends up looking like these two down here. Don't worry about this slight fraying here because that's not actually the wire, that's just the coating. Um, some of the bullets haven't caught it, some have. Not a problem in this application. For this one, um, it does look like I'm going to have to get the dashboard out because the switch is way up there somewhere. Joy. I've got enough things connected up. I uh, just want to see what happens when I connect the battery. Make sure there's no weird noises or anything. Um, the battery in the car is pretty flat. I have wired up the clock the way the diagram shows. It's not... well I can't hear it running but I don't know if that's because I've wired it wrong or because the clock itself doesn't work. I'll have to do some further testing on that. So, the battery is quite flat. I don't think there's enough power in it to actually um, fire the starter motor. So I'm not going to try that. I just want to see if we get anything come on on the dash. Oh, we do. And the fuel gauge isn't connected at the moment. That's jumping straight to full. And the temperature sender isn't connected to anything either. Although I wouldn't expect a reading on that but the oil light and the ignition light come on so that's good, they should now if I crank the car over obviously as I said the battery is too flat but if I crank the car over these will go out now then have I got the lights wired up? I haven't got the lights wired up yet either so I don't think the panel switch will work not that you could really tell, it's so dim this panel so yeah but. Hey, it's some life back in it. That's good, that's a step in the right direction. 